Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint. Now it's time for us to join our regular resident bookworm, Henry Malt, as he delves deeply between the sheets of another artistic offering available from the SAA Library. Today's book is The Colour Mixing Bible by Ian Sidaway. Is this, I mean it says Bible, is that exactly what it is? It's certainly what it intends to be. Okay. Um, it's one of the first colour mixing definitive guides that there was. Okay. Um, some of the ones that came along later did it more with example paintings and with okay. colour wheels that I think, to be honest, breaks it up and makes it more interesting. Yeah, because the thing that I noticed about this is this pages and pages and pages of just um, colour swatches, which of course is what you want. If you say Bible, that's what you'd expect to see. If that's what, if that's what you're looking for and you specifically want, well, I suppose a colour chart isn't really the wrong word to describe it, yeah. then that's absolutely it, because you just go on, find the colour you want and see how it was made up. It's a useful thing to have on your bookshelf, I think, this one, in the studio. Yes. Um, I have a friend who says, well, colour mixing is all about, it's the fundamental of painting, and if you can't do colour mixing, why are you painting? Yeah. But there are plenty of people who have difficulty with it. Yeah. Talking to people, students and things at the classes and workshops, is the there's lots of interest in how paint is made and pigments and the science behind it. And the first few pages in this book actually goes into quite a lot of detail about that, which is quite nice. It, it talks mm. about primary colours, the science of colours and how colours are made, which is actually quite a nice thing to, be, to get in there. Colour theory is one of those things that you need to know about and yeah. everyone shies away from. Yeah. Uh, but to get it in what we were looking at half a dozen pages there, it's something that you, you could get to grips with mm. and you don't need to be afraid of and it will explain. And it's, once it's been explained to you, it's actually very simple. Mm. I mean, I'm sure you've probably had people ask about it. Um, you've spent five minutes and they would like to think they've got it. Yeah, it's a, it's a useful thing to know, the science behind it, because it, even down to the weight of a pigment or something like this, it's, it's nice to know how pigments react to different papers, how they settle in the water. So it's a, it's a good thing to know. And this has got a pretty straightforward way of explaining it right at the beginning. I mean, it even goes right back into the ancient times talking about how they use pigments and things. So I guess it'd be a nice little read. And then it's got the useful side as well. And right yes. at the back, of course, it's got some uh, example it paintings it as well. It's got, it does have example paintings. I would say on balance there are too few, maybe, and it would be nice if they were spread throughout the book. It would, okay. make, it, it would make it a more interesting book. Yeah. But then if you don't want an interesting book, you want a useful book, mm. then have it, everything stuck together in the order it's done. Yeah. Actually works out rather better. Okay. So what's your final thoughts on that book? Well, we, I think we should just say that it covers all of the media, or the oil, acrylic, watercolour, yeah. pastel and coloured pencil. Yeah. So if you're thinking in terms of a single medium, bear in mind that you're probably only going to be using a quarter of the book. Okay. But then again, it's there. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. Thanks again, Henry, for we a like smashing it. review. Thank <laughs> you. Today I'm going to show you one of the items that I just can't do without in my box, a size 16 brush with a really, really good point. It's something that will get on very big washes very quickly, or you can do very, very tiny detail on it if you need to. Great for taking away on holidays um, when you don't have to worry about weight. One brush will do. Start by putting on some paint just to show you how quickly you can get those washes on. We we'll mix up nice big amount and so you can get that on really quickly if you're traveling to somewhere very hot it's, you're not going to worry too much about that drying before you finish putting your washes on and then equally when you want to do something very delicate with the point you can put in eyes you can do very tiny dark lines any sort of detail you don't have to keep changing brushes all the time. You can do that with the one brush. Dry brush marks. This is the one paintbrush that I couldn't be without. My size 16 brush with its amazing point. 
Okay, it's time for something new now, folks. Over the forthcoming weeks, we are going to be following versatile artist Keith Fennick as he breaks down all the key elements involved in producing your own watercolour masterpiece. Let's join Keith for today's Art Bike project and take a look at some of the simple techniques you can use to paint stunning skies and trees. I'm going to show you three simple techniques for painting watercolours. I'm using my sky and texture brush and we're going to do the sky first of all. I like to put a bit of raw sand underneath my skies. This is a wet and wet sky of course. I put a bit of tape across here, look, that will stop the paint running down onto the land. So I'm just wetting it like that. And then we're going to drop wet paint into it. Just a little bit more. So we now want a bit of cobalt blue. Make sure you've mixed your paint well on the brush. Now my trees are slightly to the left, so I need my darker clouds on the right. This big brush is ideal. You can cover the sky area very, very quickly. A bit of darker colour, a bit of paint's grey, mixed with the cobalt blue, will just darken the blue. And we'll just put a bit more depth of colour in here, look. tissue, I'll put some clouds in, look, very easy to do, now once you've stained the paper you must turn it round, so I'll put a bit in there, look, a bit there, a bit down the bottom, a bit along here, and a bit of nice white cloud over here. There's a very simple sky, but it's quite pleasing. So we need to give it a quick dry now. We're going to put some trees in now, and I'm using my large stiffer brush for speed. So I'm using a bit of hooker's green. With a bit of paint's grey, we'll just stip of these trees in, look. I'm working down to the tape. A bit darker colour, more paint's grey. Trees are dark on the inside and light on the outside. I'm going over to my special tree brush just to give them a bit of shape. Get some more delicate work now. Need to dry that. Mixing some green, some yellow, get a soft colour, just a little bit of titanium white acrylic. You can use gouache, but gouache sinks in. I want the paint to stay on the top, so I get the foliage staying on the top. I'm starting medium tone. Now I'm going to put the highlights on. Stepping away, nice and easy. Some more yellow, mixed with some white. 
That'll give me some highlights. That's better. Bit more white, bit more yellow. That's better. I don't want all the trees to be the same colours. Bit of highlight again. That's better. All I'm going to do now is to paint in a fence. Now we don't want square fences. The distance between the fence posts must be twice the height of the fence. And I'm not continuing the fence along. Otherwise I'm saying to the viewer, don't come into my painting. We'll take the tape off. Well that's our first stage complete. Join me next time and we'll progress with the painting. Some great tips there Keith. Remember to keep watching future programmes when Keith will be showing us some more key elements to help you see the bigger picture and produce watercolour painting that you'll be proud of. Right folks, time for our final break, but join us in part four when SIA professional artist Warren Seeley returns to add the finishing touches to today's Try Your Hand Up project. And I'll be answering a few more of your viewers' questions from the Splashy Paint post bag. See you very soon. <laughs>